So, welcome to inflation. What we're going to look at is the two main causes of inflation, namely demand pull and cost push. There's a third cause, which is the monetarist cause, we'll look at in another video. So, these two causes are really useful um, in many exam answers to explain why inflation occurs. Of course, inflation is a sustained increase in the average price level or a fall in the value of money. That's quite an important definition. So, Demand pull inflation occurs really when there's excess demand in the whole economy relative to aggregate supply. So aggregate demand is growing at an unsustainable rate, at a greater rate than aggregate supply. So this, this can be shown by a rightward shift in the aggregate demand line. Um, and what, what happens if firms take advantage of that by pushing up prices as supply is increasingly um, low relative to aggregate demand? So here we get an increase in the average price level and an increase in output. Okay, notice we do have a trade-off there as aggregate demand increases, at least output's decreasing, but we've got this problem of inflation taking place. Okay, now what are the causes of demand pull inflation? Well, one call, cause could be an excessive fiscal stimulus. So if the government uh, increases government expenditure and or reduces taxation to too great an extent, this boosts aggregate demand, and indeed there's a multiplier effect that could take place where there'd be additional spending and an additional increase in aggregate demand, and yet more inflation. Okay, so fiscal stimulus occurs really when the government um, makes a mistake in terms of fiscal policy by boosting aggregate demand as a result of an increase in government expenditure or reducing taxation. Now, monetary stimulus could be when the Bank of England reduces interest rates too much. So there's too much borrowing and there's an increase in consumption and probably an increase in investment. And therefore aggregate demand shifts to the right. Okay. And another cause could be an increase in exports to fast growing export markets. Um, this would increase exports and again lead to an export net multiplier effect, which will boost aggregate demand and could result in demand pool inflation. Uh, and perhaps um, another explanation might be a consumer boom. So if, for example, asset prices such as house prices or share prices increase significantly, you get a positive net wealth effect and, of course, an increase in consumer confidence. And this leads to a significant increase in consumption and a rightward shift in aggregate demand and, therefore, inflation. However, um, it's worth noting that um, you only really get demand pull inflation um, if aggregate supply doesn't respond to the increase in aggregate demand. So we look at a more sophisticated diagram, perhaps, such as this simple Keynesian diagram. If we increase aggregate demand from 81 to 82, notice um, aggregate supply is perfectly elastic at that point, so you can increase output from Y1 to Y2 without there being any inflation. Then what happens, of course, is aggregate supply becomes increasingly inelastic as shortages and bottlenecks occur in the economy. For example, a shortage of builders in the building trade necessit necessitating higher costs, and therefore um, the price levels can start to go up. And this really begins to happen as we go from AD2 to, to AD3, as you can see there. And here, um, basically, the aggregate supply curve is becoming increasingly inelastic and therefore the trade-off is changing. We get some increase in output, but increasingly the price level goes up from P1 to P2 here. Then aggregate demand shifts to aggregate demand 4, and we're increasingly inelastic on the aggregate supply, so we get more inflation at P3, and less of an increase in output. And then if we go from AD4 to AD5, notice elast the elasticity of supply is perfectly inelastic at this point, and therefore all we end up with is inflation in the economy. So both these diagrams are useful, as are these points here, in explaining demand pull inflation. Now the other cause of inflation is cost push inflation. Um, this is simply a result of an increase in costs that firms pass on to customers through higher prices. And this is demonstrated by a leftward shift in the short run aggregate supply curve. Now notice on this diagram two unfortunate things happen. You get both an increase in inflation, cost push inflation, but you also get simultaneously a fall in output. Um, 
And indeed, if the Bank of England wanted to correct this, they put up interest rates, reduce aggregate demand even further, and say we're aiming for a price level of P1, then we might have aggregate demand here, and look, our output's going to fall even further. So cost push is really quite an insidious form of inflation for an economy. Anyhow, what are the causes of cost? Oh, just before we look at the causes, it's important to reassume and read that productivity remains constant. Because if firms increase productivity, then the increase in input costs could be offset by the increase in productivity. Also, um, we need to consider what's happening to profits. If profit levels remain constant, then the increased input prices must, be, must result in an increase in output prices yeah, for the firm to maintain its profits. So we're assuming that profits and productivity are remaining constant. And now what's going to cause cost push inflation? Basically an increase in input costs such as raw materials, such as oil, copper ore, agricultural goods such as wheat. If these increase in price and firms maintain profits, then finished products are going to increase in price. Um, and that's shown in this diagram, of course. Um, rising labour costs um, are often a potential cause of inflation. So if workers are able to push for increased wages without increasing productivity, so the key thing is if wage increases are greater than the increase in productivity, okay, then that leads to inflation if firms maintain their profits. Okay, and that's sometimes called wage push inflation. And furthermore, if we look at inflationary expectations, they're rather important because say you get an initial increase in say wheat prices, so food prices go up, so the average price level increases, then what do workers do? Workers say, hmm, we need to compensate for this with higher wages. So there's what the Bank of England calls a second round effect. The first round is the increase in the initial prices because of raw materials going up, such as wheat prices, and then the second round of more inflation is a lot of workers keeping up with that and demanding higher wages. And if uh, workers are grouped in trade unions, which have some form of trade union muscle, um, by threatening potentially strike action or other forms of industrial action, they're able to push up wages. So that, um, that's called the second round effect. So inflation, in a sense, is a self-fulfilling prophecy sometimes based on expectations. Uh, next point is higher indirect taxes causes inflation for a year or so. If we increase excise duty, the unit um, tax on cigarettes or on alcohol, then that pushes up prices and leads to higher inflation in the economy. Um, it only lasts three years, a year or so because it will come out the index. The same with an increase in the VAT, that pushes up consumer prices. And the last point, of course, but not least, is depreciation of the exchange rate, say the pound. If the pound depreciates, what happens is imports become more expensive. So therefore, the short run aggregate supply curve shifts to the left. That causes um, cost push inflation because the imports are becoming more expensive. And of course, it might lead to second round effects based on inflationary expectations. But I hear you say, what about demand pull? And yes, exports will become cheaper because of the depreciation of the pound exports become cheaper. There'll be more exports, therefore an export-led multiplier, therefore an increase in aggregate demand, and guess what? We've got demand pull inflation as well. So a change in the exchange rate can affect inflation. A depreciation will tend to cause both cost push and demand pull inflation. Because of the pound or the currency strengthens and that appreciation, that's going to help reduce inflation. Okay, I hope that all makes sense. Thank you very much.